so you were you were a Democrat, and then you were like, you know, what was the what was the thing that that made you feel like, okay, this isn't working within this party? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the book by Walter Karp called Indispensable Enemies. Are you familiar mm-hmm. with that one? No, but it sounds like something I need to read. It is. So this is the book, uh, The Politics of Misrule in America. It came out a few years ago, maybe in the early 90s. Okay. But it's all about how the Democrats and Republicans actually work together. How yes. you know they'll, they'll they'll go behind closed doors and they'll like, well, we'll give you this district if you give us that district. And yes, and and and, and he talks about how like you ever notice how there's only like a Republican or a Democrat running. And there's no other, there's no one opposing them. That's not in, that's not by accident. That was, that was an, a, a, an agreement that was made. So anyways, it's, it's interesting, interesting book. Sort of like Bernie Sanders. So Bernie Sanders ostensibly is an independent, but there's a, n- never a Democrat that runs against him and he caucuses with the Democratic Party. So how independent is that independent? And I remember Joe Lieberman, uh, did the same thing in the state of Connecticut. He, you know, when he lost the um, Democratic nomination, he actually then turned around and ran as a, as an independent. So uh, some people can run for independent and not be independent. And, 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 and you know, it's just another way, uh, it's just another bit of chicanery. But when you ask the question, um, uh, well, you know, what was sort of, what we say down south, my come to Jesus moment. (laughs) Well, it was basically when I was in a a hearing and um, the chairman of the, it was the international relations uh, committee and subcommittee of the international relations. And so the chairman of the subcommittee, it called a meeting and it was supposed to be a knockdown drag out, uh, you know, big thing. And so this is like, if it wasn't my freshman year, it might've been my sophomore year, you know, it was very early. And um, so I go to this hearing and the chairman is just letting it all hang out. And, you know, he's criticizing this guy and at the end of the hearing, they walked out arm in arm. And I said, oh my gosh, it was just theater. And I was a, I was a, a true believer. At that moment, it struck me that I had put my belief in a system that was populated with fakes. And so my dad had always told me Cynthia, they put their pants on just like you do. And then I began to understand what he meant. And so uh, I didn't see them as, uh, you know, sort of demigods or, you know, I I didn't see them as um, these great heroic figures any longer. I just saw them as individuals who could be flawed. And in many instances were flawed. There are some people who are still there who took those trips with Abramoff, with Jack Abramoff. So now why did one particular representative get hounded out of the Congress on the basis of him having taken a trip to Jack, to a, a trip with Jack Abramoff and others who took those trips, nothing happened to them. So what was the selection process that meant that it was time for this one to go, but it wasn't time for that one to go. And so then I began to to actually see 